You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. Jared pressed a button and that fired into life. Yeah. I'm very, very excited now. So we might have an actual footrest that works. Okay. So, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, everything works in this van. Welcome everyone to the next episode of my Dodge Caravan rebuild, proudly supported by Advance Auto Parts. Now, if you guys don't know, this thing is my 1999 Dodge Caravan, and it was on a little show called Pimp My Ride. So in the first episode, we took off the wheels, we took off the body panels, because this morning I took everything to the body shop, and honestly, that took a little bit longer than I wanted. I wanted to get a little bit of an early start on this, but today is gonna be when we do all the building. Now, when I say we, I mean me and my friend Jared over here. So I asked Jared not to do anything basically the entire day because I wanted to get dirty just as much as, as you are. You never said that. Listen, I thought it was like a unwritten thing. You know, we can take a look. Dude. Oh, co come on, man. Dude, I can't believe you did this. I mean, people are gonna get really mad that none of this stuff was on camera. Who said I didn't get it on camera? All right, now that we are caught up, actually you guys are caught up, I have no idea what Jared did. Jared, can you explain to us in about 30 seconds what all you did here? So we pulled the intake manifold, which was the big part here, valve covers, thermostat housing, water pump, all the accessory drives, the power steering pump bracket, fuel injectors are out. We still have to do the coolant temperature switch out and the front motor mount. But other than that, it's put all new parts back onto it. Is it realistic to say that uh, this is gonna be a running engine by the end of the night? Oh, absolutely. I've, I've been impressed the ease of working on this thing. It's not what I expected. As much rust kind of hid around on the bolts. It's, it's straightforward. Yeah, so. it's actually not too bad. I mean, you have these brackets that are a little bit rusty, but they're actually not, not rusted through or anything. But I see that a lot of the stuff you've taken off is uh, a little worse for the wear and I figure we can probably sandblast those and make them a little more pretty. That is the old power steering pump. Yeah, this one is a little uh, little leaky. You can see that the seal is not exactly doing its job. Now normally you don't have to pull the bracket to change that power steering pump, but since we had everything apart and we're trying to clean it up, why not go ahead and take it out? We also have an alternator here and that alternator is uh, not exactly alternating. How how yeah. how easily does it turn? Yeah, that was the one we've showed a couple times. It's an alternator that doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. What's really interesting is the case is actually cracked and exploded out. How does that happen? Uh, one, the bearing seized and something expanded. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's possible is if water drained into it and actually got stuck and because the car sat, it froze and cracked it. I was thinking like Pikachu Thundershock. So we have that and we have all of these parts here that we got from Advance. We have our batteries, we have our brake calipers, we have our brake rotors and pads, and we have everything that we need here to basically rebuild this car yeah. and uh, make it a very good runner and very good daily driver for somebody. So right now, Jared's gonna be putting everything back in the engine bay and I will tackle the fun bit because I don't really want to get that dirty, even though this is probably dirtier. I'm going to be doing the interior.
dude, how you doing? Doing good. It doesn't look like I've done much, but we have new spark plugs, the water pumps in, the power steering pumps in, all the front brackets except for the two that you're painting are back. That, that looks a lot, even if we didn't paint it, that looks better. I have brought you gift, Jared. Making headway, we're gonna do the motor mount and then we can put in our new cooling fans. Question. Is this generally a problem? I mean, there's a there's a little bit of sludge in this uh, drivetrain here. You don't want sludge, but I'm not surprised to see that amount of sludge in, in a domestic van that probably hasn't had the best service history. When you really get concerned is when you start to see it built up to the shape of the valve cover. I used to work at Toyota and I've pulled a valve cover off and mm -hmm. it looks like the valve cover was still there. Oh, <laughs> That's no. bad. You can actually put some uh, automatic transmission fluid right before an oil change interval, about 500 miles before, and it has enough detergents, so it'll clean it up and do that over the next couple oil changes, and it'll probably look pretty close to new again. Are we ready to watch uh, Tavarish episodes? We're not ready to watch anything right now. Okay. So We're not, no. Work. Also, uh, there's no battery in there, so uh, how are we gonna watch TV? Well, didn't you find the something extra? Well, okay, now it's starting to look like something. I think she cleans up pretty well but I have uncovered some treasures back here. First off, there's a second battery, which is completely, completely dead. Not sure how long it's been there. I don't know if any of the old owners knew that it was in there, but that's something we have to replace. Now this right here is part of the footrest mechanism and that actually goes in and out. That does work. But the problem is the footrest, it also is a monitor, and the monitor, unfortunately, does not work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put everything back the way it was with a non-working monitor. I don't think it's gonna be a, a huge deal and just have a footrest that actually works. But other than that, if you take a look over here, there's a little space where you can see the outside world. And uh, that, I guess, is where you store all the remotes. That is all broken apart. I have to put that together with some wood glue. And then we have to figure out why those monitors work or why they don't work and why they're a little bit wobbly. And also I have to secure all this stuff. So right now it's gonna be a giant montage of me just tightening everything up, testing, and then making sure it works. And then we're gonna have a fully pimped interior. Look at what Jared did in this engine bay, it looks amazing. You can't even tell that <laughs> anything was done because it just looks like a regular engine bay, but the alternator's new, the belt's new, all the tensioners, the pulleys. We have the cleaned up valve covers, the valve cover gaskets. We have the thermostat gasket, the thermostat. We have the coolant. We have, what else did we have? Oil. We have the coolant temperature sender because the, the old one was corroded. Spark plug wires, spark plugs, water pump. Basically every soft part to do maintenance is new. If this was a Ferrari, this would cost $20,000. I think the time is right to start this thing. Oh yeah. All right, moment of truth. We have gas now. And we have Edward at our side. We, ha we have who? Edward. Uh, all right. All right. Anything leaking? Nope. Water pumps are turning. Fire steering pumps are turning. That is a very, very quiet sounding engine. You think we should just leave it alone and get it up to operating time? Yeah, we'll, we'll let her burp out so we can balance the coolant, get heat inside. Okay. Welcome everyone to day two of our 24 our build. This is the next day. I have different clothes on and uh, we sort of left off on the car running and we wanted to get it up to operating temperature, but we figured that we should probably do other things before we get it on its first test drive and that is fill up the AC. Now the AC is very important for a lot of vehicles, but especially for a van because usually you want to be, you know, comfortable. Unfortunately, our air conditioning system has a leak in it. Now, what I did and what you're supposed to do before ever charging up an AC, I have my manifold gauges on here and I pulled a vacuum with my little vacuum pump and then I let it sit for about 30 minutes. So initially it was about 25 uh, in the red right here. And then over 30 minutes, it went down to under 20, which means that we have a leak. It's a small leak, but a leak nonetheless. And if we start putting in 
refrigerant, that means that when it pressurizes, that pressure is gonna leak out somewhere and we're not gonna have AC anymore. Well, I mean, right now it's, it's kind of cold. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Actually in Florida, it's cool. Yeah. Where we're going, it's even colder. Yeah, so this car is gonna be going to a place where this AC is not necessary not right now, but we got the engine running. The engine runs fine. We have the cooling system bled. It is nice and uh, it's nice and warm to the touch. We just had the brake system overhauled by my boy Jared right here. Brand new shoes in the back. We have rotors, pads, and calipers in the front, and we bled all four wheels. Fun fact, the 99 Dodge Caravan actually had 16 inch carbon ceramic brakes as an option, and that is uh, not true. We also put on the new tires. I think they're a General G-Max AS05s. Apparently they're okay. Are those heavy? Oh, just a little bit. Okay, hold on, let me let me help you. Let me help you there. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay. all right, I got it. Right, is that helping? Yeah, it's helping a lot, dude. Check out these leaf springs. Should a leaf spring be completely horizontal like this one is? Uh, it varies. Sometimes they're flat. Sometimes you want a little arc in them. I think these are just a little tired. I don't believe by design. Also, there's a lot of audio equipment in the back. Uh, so that's kind of weighing it down just yeah, a bit. It's, it's a little soft in the rear for comfort. I was busy back here doing electronics things and I figured out why a lot of this stuff didn't work and that's because it just wasn't plugged in. I must say the quality of work that went into this car is actually pretty good. Now fit and finish was obviously not the best. However, if you look at the wiring work, they did go to great lengths to make sure that everything was fused. Everything has relays, there's relays back there. I had to make sure that everything was done correctly. And we also got this thing. This is a uh, triple flip down monitor. We actually made this work again because uh, the way they did it in the show was they had a antenna motor and they retrofitted it to basically control this. There's three flip down monitors right here and it's on these drawer slides, and the drawer slides go up and down. However, the motor was really, really past it. So we ended up going just back to advance, and we can see that the uh, the motor was one that they already carried. It was a Metro motor, and then all we did was we modified it in the same way, and uh, now it actually works, well, hopefully. Oh, oh, yep, yep, no, the other way, other way. There we go. Look at that. And... Oh, that's not a good sound. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. Now they're supposed to turn on. Turn this one on. And then we can turn this one on. I believe I have to set up the RCA for that top one. Well, the second one should work. No, I think the splitter might be at fault. That needs addressing, but check this out. Woo! <laughs> So I wanted to get to the bottom of why the video signal wasn't getting to one of our monitors. And I narrowed it down to this splitter. This is a powered splitter, which means that power comes in and it amplifies a signal going from one RCA, this is a video output, into four. That's how you get all the monitors playing the same thing at the same time. Now this is a pretty simple circuit, but I know when a solder joint is bad. If you can see me wiggling these two prongs right here, it looks like the solder just came off. This is a capacitor for that input. So theoretically, all I have to do is solder this back, make sure that the connection is good and we should be good to go. All right, moment of truth, I have the splitter here. Everything is connected. I have soldered a bunch of joints that I thought were questionable and I made my fixes and hopefully, fingers crossed, well, let me actually cross my fingers. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this should work. And this does its little song and dance and at some point, maybe, there we go. So we have one, two, three working. Moment of truth to see if the back is working as well. Oh, oh yeah. We have a fully working seven, actually not even seven. We have seven, eight, and soon to be nine 
Not sure if that's gonna work, but nine monitor setup in this van. I am so surprised that things worked out. Yeah, that they all came back to life. Cause you would think, what was it? 2004 yeah. era's technology wouldn't quite have the staying factor. No, no, everything works. I mean, you do see some like dead pixels every once in a while, but it's, it's really not that bad. It's impressive. This is, this is 100% hater vision right here. So when we get this all buttoned up and we hit this button for neon, now we have everything back here sort of lit up, but then it powers up <laughs> this guy. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, now I have to just clean up everything after replace that battery, put the footrest in, and then the interior should be 100% sorted. So much. <laughs> <laughs> Tell no one what happened today. <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. Jared pressed the button and that fired into life. Yeah. I'm very, very excited now. So we might have an actual footrest that okay. works. Okay. So, oh, yes, yes. No, <laughs> oh, everything works in this van, dude. Yeah! Dude, this van is 100% functional. 100%. I, like, we have officially been pimped. Yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We gotta clean this up and, and take this for a drive. It's, all, it's already dark, so our 24-hour our build took a little bit more than 24 hours. You were just supposed to put the turn down there. Uh, well, um, the van doesn't sound very good, so I'm gonna make it sound better. It is a van. Yeah, I know, but now it's gonna be a, a van that sounds good. Are All you right. proud of yourself, Freddy? Well, I'm proud that I'm balancing this thing. Yep. Look at that. That is so much better. We have so much more room for activities. Okay, we'll just take this off. Very OEM improved method of doing this. And just twist and pull. Engage our safety squints, people. Well, you uh, have, no, you have glasses on. I know, but I still engage safety squints, you know. Double protection. Double protection. Hit. All right, there you go. There we go. That was easy. Hey, Freddy. That was, what? Here's your turn down. Uh, stop, stop. You want your turn down? Stop it, no. Where, where does it go? What's it for? Jared, I swear. What? Do not. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> turn. Stop. <laughs> so we got this turn down from uh for what we picked this up from advance with these little clamps and all you have to do is just stick it right on here and it makes your van sound awesome so just make sure you have enough purchase on the exhaust and i think we are in business. So this is a very, very nice little modification.
Look at that. The body shop did an amazing job matching the colors. Now, obviously the colors are really hard to match. I didn't know what the paint code was and it's a metallic color, but they did a really good job with the front bumper, the side skirts. They were all jacked up and now they look brand new. And Jared did a great job with polishing these lights with that kit we got at Advance. But right now is gonna be the maiden voyage of this van and I can't stop looking at it. It is just so, it it, it looks like, like a, like a piece of candy. It's, it's really vibrant, it pops, and everything on the interior works. But we have the door open because we are about to do something, well, since it's sort of the season for it, we decided that uh, we should do something nice. So we went and bought a bunch of toys, and we are just going to uh, drop them off and also um, take this thing for a little spin and see how she drives. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, this is, this is heavy. No, you, you can't have this. This is for, this is for kids. Yes, yes, you are a kid. You definitely are a kid. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see how she drives. Rolling up a window. Okay. All right. First foray into the real world with my new, completely restored van. Ooh. <laughs> you like the fuzzy dice? Every van needs fuzzy dice. Okay, so uh, speedometer works. Uh, temperatures, pressures, all that stuff. Well, pressures, I don't know, but temperature is okay. We have an ABS light on, but I'm not sure what that's about. We just went into second gear, third gear. This feels like a van. Doing 40 miles an hour. We have gas. The gas gauge was a little bit wonky, but I think it sort of found its, found its place. It found its happy. Yeah. Needs a bit of, a little bit of an alignment, but it's not, it's not too bad. Like, Right, right now, it's it. We're, we're going a little bit to the right, but nothing, nothing too horrible. Brakes work. Brakes are definitely working. I would hope so. It's all new. <laughs> what would that say about me? There's nothing, nothing rattling back here. I would think that with all this custom yeah, stuff, with everything back yeah, there, yeah, it would be, it would be a rattling mess. But it's, it's actually nice. Hey, Freddy, what just happened? Uh, uh, magic happened. Magic just happened, so the ABS light just went off. Apparently, all this car needs to fix itself is successful drive cycles with working brakes. Yeah, with, with everything working, it just wants to confirm it twice and then it starts working again. Oh my gosh. Okay, so there is zero wrong with this van right now. The only tiny gremlin. Stop, nope. Is the nope. gas gauge. Nope. Nope. No. It, it randomly thinks it's empty. No. Nope. Zero wrong. Zero, right now. Zero wrong. Right now, there's nothing wrong. You know wrong. who should see this? You know who should see this? Who? The people that helped us out in advance. Oh, absolutely. I think they'll enjoy it. You want to go? Let's go. All right. Let's go show off our uh, our trophy. <laughs> Take a look. Uh, there we go. That's pretty <laughs> neat. Yeah. We have our footrest monitor. Just in case you want to, you know, put your feet up. Give me the, the remote. We have a little... Uh, Floor. A little dance floor action here. Like that. Does the ceiling retract back so I can put my head out? Well, listen, um, you know, it, this is not the deluxe model. <laughs> but if you actually look on, on the ceiling, you yeah, can see that it has a uh, laser little show. Laser, laser show up there. All right, we go. That's pretty cool there. This is running. Actually, it's running very, very well because of you guys. So, yeah, I, I just wanted to thank you and let you see all this uh, all this stuff and we're about to be uh, driving this thing quite quite a long time. Where are you driving it to? Oh, uh, we're driving it to well, middle of the country about like a thousand miles something like that, so. There you go. We got new brakes, uh, new rotors, pads, calipers, all that. And underneath it's just a uh, it's a pretty honest engine. It's not anything like super, you know, polished or anything, but it works. Everything on this side is new alternator tensioners yeah you guys had absolutely everything in stock it was it was, it was nuts that was good. Get it within a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah this was uh this was this was great and it was fun so we did this in about two days and we did the headlight restoration there you go yeah so they look brand new yeah. do I get your mark of approval here yes sir <laughs> yeah, for sure you do awesome awesome how you doing dude great well your day is about to get a lot better. Okay. So. A fast and furious Mercy Lago? Uh, better. 
Mm. <laughs> you see it in the reflection, don't you? I do see it in the reflection. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Turn around! Oh my. <laughs> 